The cynic. Lysinus. A cynic. Lie. Give an account of yourself, my man. You wear a beard and let your hair grow, you eschew shirts, you exhibit your skin, your feet are bare, you choose a wandering, outcast, beastly life. Unlike other people, you make your own body the object of your severities. You go from place to place sleeping on the hard ground where chance finds you, with the result that your old cloak, neither light nor soft nor gay to begin with, has a plentiful load of filth to carry about with it. Why is it all? Sigh. It meets my needs. It was easy to come by, and it gives its owner no trouble. It is the cloak for me. Pray tell me, do you not call extravagance a vice? Lie. Oh, yes. Sigh. An economy of virtue? Lie. Yes, again. Sigh. Then, if you find me living economically, and others extravagantly, why blame me instead of them? Lie. I do not call your life more economical than other people's, I call it more destitute, destitution and want, that is what it is. You are no better than the poor who beg their daily bread. Sigh. That brings us to the questions, what is want, and what is sufficiency? Shall we try to find the answers? Lie. If you like, yes. Sigh. A man's sufficiency is that which meets his necessities, will that do? Lie. I pass that. Sigh. And want occurs when the supply falls short of necessity, does not meet the need? Lie. Yes. Sigh. Very well, then, I am not in want. Nothing of mine fails to satisfy my need. Lie. How do you make that out? Sigh. Well, consider the purpose of anything we require, the purpose of a house is protection. Lie. Yes. Sigh. Clothing, what is that for? Protection too, I think. Lie. Yes. Sigh. But now, pray, what is the purpose of the protection, in turn? The better condition of the protected, I presume. Lie. I agree. Sigh. Then do you think my feet are in worse condition than yours? Lie. I cannot say. Sigh. Oh, yes, look at it this way. What have feet to do? Lie. Walk. Sigh. And do you think my feet walk worse than yours, or than the average man's? Lie. Oh, not that, I dare say. Sigh. Then they are not in worse condition, if they do their work as well. Lie. That may be so. Sigh. So it appears that, as far as feet go, I am in no worse condition than other people. Lie. No, I do not think you are. Sigh. Well, the rest of my body, then. If it is in worse condition, it must be weaker, strength being the virtue of the body. Is mine weaker? Lie. Not that I see. Sigh. Consequently, neither my feet nor the rest of my body need protection, it seems, if they did, they would be in bad condition, for want is always an evil, and deteriorates the thing concerned. But again, there is no sign either, of my body's being nourished the worse for its nourishments being of a common sort. Lie. None whatever. Sigh. It would not be healthy, if it were badly nourished, for bad food injures the body. Lie. That is true. Sigh. If so, it is for you to explain why you blame me and depreciate my life and call it miserable. Lie. Easily explained. Nature, which you honor, and the gods have given us the earth, and brought all sorts of good things out of it, providing us with abundance not merely for our necessities, but for our pleasures. And then you abstain from all or nearly all of it, and utilize these good things no more than the beasts. Your drink is water, just like theirs, you eat what you pick up, like a dog, and the dog's bed is as good as yours. Straw is enough for either of you. 
then your clothes are no more presentable than a beggar's. Now, if this sort of contentment is to pass for wisdom, God must have been all wrong in making sheep woolly, filling grapes with wine, and providing all our infinite variety of oil, honey, and the rest, that we might have food of every sort. Pleasant drink, money, soft beds, fine houses, all the wonderful paraphernalia of civilization, in fact. For the productions of art are God's gifts to us too. To live without all these would be miserable enough even if one could not help it, as prisoners cannot, for instance, it is far more so if the abstention is forced upon a man by himself. It is then sheer madness. Sigh. You may be right. But take this case, now. A rich man, indulging genial kindly instincts, entertains at a banquet all sorts and conditions of men. Some of them are sick, others sound, and the dishes provided are as various as the guests. There is one of these to whom nothing comes amiss. He has his finger in every dish, not only the ones within easy reach, but those some way off that were intended for the invalids. This though he is in rude health, has not more than one stomach, requires little to nourish him, and is likely to be upset by a surfeit. What is your opinion of this gentleman? Is he a man of sense? Lie. Why, no. Sigh. Is he temperate? Lie. No, nor that. Sigh. Well, then there is another guest at the same table, he seems unconscious of all that variety, fixes on some dish close by that suits his need, eats moderately of it and confines himself to it without a glance at the rest. You surely find him a more temperate and better man than the other. Lie. Certainly. Sigh. Do you see, or must I explain? Lie. What? Sigh. That the hospitable entertainer is God, who provides this variety of all kinds that each may have something to suit him, this is for the sound, that for the sick, this for the strong and that for the weak, it is not all for all of us. Each is to take what is within reach, and of that only what he most needs. Now you others are like the greedy unrestrained person who lays hands on everything, local productions will not do for you, the world must be your storehouse. Your native land and its seas are quite insufficient, you purchase your pleasures from the ends of the earth, prefer the exotic to the home growth, the costly to the cheap, the rare to the common. In fact you would rather have troubles and complications than avoid them. Most of the precious instruments of happiness that you so pride yourselves upon are won only by vexation and worry. Give a moment's thought, if you will, to the gold you all pray for, to the silver, the costly houses, the elaborate dresses, and do not forget their conditions precedent, the trouble and toil and danger they cost, nay, the blood and mortality and ruin. Not only do numbers perish at sea on their account, or endure miseries in the acquisition or working of them. Besides that, they have very likely to be fought for, or the desire of them makes friends plot against friends, children against parents, wives against husbands. And how purposeless it all is. Embroidered clothes have no more warmth in them than others, gilded houses keep out the rain no better, the drink is no sweeter out of a silver cup, or a gold one for that matter, an ivory bed makes sleep no softer. On the contrary, your fortunate man on his ivory bed between his delicate sheets constantly finds himself wooing sleep in vain. And as to the elaborate dressing of food, I need hardly say that instead of aiding nutrition it injures the body and breeds diseases in it. As superfluous to mention the abuse of the sexual instinct, so easily managed if indulgence were not made an object. And if madness and corruption were limited to that. But men must take nowadays to perverting the use of everything they have, turning it to unnatural purposes, like him who insists on making a carriage of a couch. Lie. Is there such a person? Sigh. Why, he is you. You for whom men are beasts of burden, you who make them shoulder your couch carriages, and loll up there yourselves in luxury, driving your men like so many asses and bidding them turn this way and not that. This is one of the outward and visible signs of your happiness. Again, when people use edible things not for food but to get dye out of, the murex dyers, for instance, are they not abusing God's gifts? Lie. 
Certainly not. The flesh of the murex can provide a pigment as well as food. Sigh. Ah, but it was not made for that. So you can force a mixing bowl to do the work of a saucepan, but that is not what it was made for. However, it is impossible to exhaust these people's wrong-headedness, it is endless. And because I will not join them, you reproach me. My life is that of the orderly man I described. I make merry on what comes to hand, use what is cheap, and have no yearning for the elaborate and exotic. Moreover, if you think that because I need and use but few things I live the life of a beast, that argument lands you in the conclusion that the gods are yet lower than the beasts, for they have no needs at all. But to clear your ideas on the comparative merits of great and small needs, you have only to reflect that children have more needs than adults, women than men, the sick than the well, and generally the inferior than the superior. Accordingly, the gods have no needs, and those men the fewest who are nearest gods. Take Heracles, the best man that ever lived, a divine man, and rightly reckoned a god. Was it wrong-headedness that made him go about in nothing but a lion's skin, insensible to all the needs you feel? No, he was not wrong-headed, who righted other people's wrongs, he was not poor, who was lord of land and sea. Wherever he went, he was master, he never met his superior or his equal as long as he lived. Do you suppose he could not get sheets and shoes, and therefore went as he did? Absurd. He had self-control and fortitude, he wanted power, and not luxury. And Theseus his disciple, king of all the Athenians, son of fourteen. Poseidon, says the legend, and best of his generation, he too chose to go naked and unshod, it was his pleasure to let his hair and beard grow. And not his pleasure only, but all his contemporaries, they were better men than you, and would no more have let you shave them than a lion would, soft smooth flesh was very well for women, they thought. As for them, they were men, and were content to look it, the beard was man's ornament, like the lion's, or the horse's mane, God had made certain beautiful and decorative additions to those creatures, and so he had to man, in the beard. Well, I admire those ancients and would fain be like them, I have not the smallest admiration for the present generation's wonderful felicity, tables. Clothes. Bodies artificially polished all over. Not a hair to grow on any of the places where nature plants it. My prayer would be that my feet might be just hoofs, like Chiron's in the story, that I might need bedclothes no more than the lion, and costly food no more than the dog. Let my sufficient bed be the whole earth, my house this universe, and the food of my choice the easiest procurable. May I have no need, I nor any that I call friend, of gold and silver. For all human evils spring from the desire of these, seditions and wars, conspiracies and murders. The fountain of them all is the desire of more. Never be that desire mine, let me never wish for more than my share, but be content with less. Such are our aspirations, considerably different from other people's. It is no wonder that our get-up is peculiar, since the peculiarity of our underlying principle is so marked. I cannot make out why you allow a harpist his proper robe and get-up, and so the flute player has his, and the tragic actor his, but will not be consistent and recognize any uniform for a good man. The good man must be like everyone else, of course, regardless of the fact that everyone else is all wrong. Well, if the good are to have a uniform of their own, there can be none better than that which the average sensual man will consider most improper, and reject with most decision for himself. Now my uniform consists of a rough hairy skin, a threadbare cloak, long hair, and bare feet, whereas yours is for all the world that of some minister to vice. There is not a pin to choose between you, the gay colors, the soft texture, the number of garments you are swathed in, the shoes, the sleeked hair, the very scent of you, for the more blessed you are, the more do you exhale perfumes like his. What value can one attach to a man whom one's nose would identify for one of those minions? The consequence is, you are equal to no more work than they are, and to quite as much pleasure. You feed like them, you sleep like them, you walk like them except so far as you avoid walking by getting yourselves conveyed like parcels by porters or animals, as for me, my feet take me anywhere that I want to go. 
I can put up with cold and heat and be content with the works of God, such a miserable wretch am I, whereas you blessed ones are displeased with everything that happens and grumble without ceasing. What is is intolerable, what is not you pine for, in winter for summer, in summer for winter, in heat for cold, in cold for heat, as fastidious and peevish as so many invalids. Only their reason is to be found in their illness, and yours in your characters. And then, because we occasionally make mistakes in practice, you recommend us to change our plan and correct our principles, the fact being that you in your own affairs go quite at random, never acting on deliberation or reason. But always on habit and appetite. You are no better than people washed about by a flood, they drift with the current, you with your appetites. There is a story of a man on a vicious horse that just gives your case. The horse ran away with him, and at the pace it was going it he could not get off. A man in the way asked him where he was off to, wherever this beast chooses, was the reply. So if one asked you where you were bound for, if you cared to tell the truth you would say either generally, wherever your appetites chose, or in particular, where pleasure chose today, where fancy chose tomorrow. And where avarice chose another day. Or sometimes it is rage, sometimes fear, sometimes any other such feeling, that takes you whither it will. You ride not one horse, but many at different times, all vicious, and all out of control. They are carrying you straight for pits and cliffs. But you do not realize that you are bound for a fall till the fall comes. The old cloak, the shaggy hair, the whole get-up that you ridicule, has this effect, it enables me to live a quiet life, doing as I will and keeping the company I want. No ignorant uneducated person will have anything to say to one dressed like this, and the soft livers turn the other way as soon as I am in sight. But the refined, the reasonable, the earnest, seek me out. They are the men who seek me, because they are the men I wish to see. At the doors of those whom the world counts happy I do not dance attendance, their gold crowns and their purple I call ostentation, and them I laugh to scorn. These externals that you pour contempt upon, you may learn that they are seemly enough not merely for good men, but for gods, if you will look at the god statues, do those resemble you, or me? Do not confine your attention to Greece. Take a tour round the foreign temples too, and see whether the gods treat their hair and beards like me, or let the painters and sculptors shave them. Most of them, you will find, have no more shirt than I have, either. I hope you will not venture to describe again as mean an appearance that is accepted as godlike. H. The purest purized. Lysinus. Purist. Lie. Are you the man whose scent is so keen for a blunder, and who is himself blunderproof? Purr. I think I may say so. Lie. I suppose one must be blunderproof, to detect the man who is not so. Purr. Assuredly. Lie. Do I understand that you are proof? Purr. How could I call myself educated, if I made blunders at my age? Lie. Well, shall you be able to detect a culprit, and convict him if he denies it? Purr. Of course I shall. Lie. Catch me out, then, I will make one just now. Purr. Say on. Lie. Why, the deed is done, and you have missed it. Purr. You are joking, of course. Lie. No, upon my honor. The blunder is made, and you none the wiser. Well, try again. But you are not infallible on these sort of things. Purr. Well. Lie. Again, the blunder made, and you unconscious. Purr. How can that be, before you have opened your lips? Lie. Oh yes, I opened them, and to a blunder, but you never see them. I quite doubt you seeing this one even. Purr. Well, there is something very queer about it if I do not know a solecism when I hear it. Lie. One begins to doubt, when a man has missed three. Purr. Three. What do you mean? Lie. A complete trilet of them. Purr. You are certainly joking. Lie. 
And you are as certainly a poor detective. Purr. If you were to say something, one might have a chance. Lie. For chances you have had, and no result. It would have been a fine feather in your hat to have got them all. Purr. Nothing fine about it, it is no more than I undertook. Lie. Why, there you are again. Purr. Again. Lie. Feather in your hat. Purr. I don't know what you mean. Lie. Precisely, you do not know. And now suppose you go first, you do not like following, that is what it is, you understand, if you chose. Purr. Oh, I am willing enough, only you have not made any solecisms in the usual sense. Lie. How about that last? Now watch me well, as you did not get me that time. Purr. I cannot say I did. Lie. Now for a rabbit, then, there, that's him. Has he got by? There he is, that's him, I tell you. Him's enough to fill a warren, if you don't wake up. Purr. Oh, I am wide awake. Lie. Well, they are gone. Purr. Never. Lie. The fact is, your too much learning renders you unconscious to solecisms, whatever case I take, it is always the same. Purr. What you mean by that I am sure I don't know. But I have often caught people out in blunders. Lie. Well, you will catch me about the time that you are a sucking child again. By the way, a babe laying in his cradle would hardly jar on your notions of grammar, if you have not yet got me. Purr. Well, I am convinced. Lie. Now, if we cannot detect blunders like these, we are not likely to know much about our own, you see, you have just missed another. Very well now, never again call yourself competent either to detect blunders or to avoid them. This is my blunt way, you see. Socrates of Mopsus, with whom I was acquainted in Egypt, used to put his corrections more delicately, so as not to humiliate the offender. Here are some specimens. What time do you set out on your travels, what time? Oh, I see, you thought I started today. The patrimonial income supplies me well enough. Dot, patrimonial. But your father is not dead. So and so is a tribesman of mine. Dot, oh, you are a savage, are you? The fellow is a boozy. Oh, boozy was his mother's name, was it? Worse your luck I never knew. Dot, well, you need not make it worse her. I always said he had a good bert. Dot, yes, quite an artist. So glad to see you, old cock, come, allow me humanity. Contemptuous fellow. I would not go near him. Dot, if he were contemptible, it would not matter, I suppose. He is the most unique of friends. Dot, good, one likes degrees in uniqueness. How aggravating, indeed. What does it aggravate? So I ascended up. Ingenious man, doubling your speed like that. I had to do it, I was in an engagement. Dot, like Xenophon's hoplites. I got round him. Dot, comprehensive person. They went to law, but were compounded. Dot, you don't say they didn't get apart again. He would apply the same delicate treatment to people unsound in their attic. That's the truth of it, said someone, between you and I, ah no, you will have to admit that you and me are wrong there. Another person giving a circumstantial account of a local legend said, so when she mingled with Heracles, without Heracles's mingling with her. He asked a man who told him that he must have a close crop, what his particular felony had been. There I quarrel, said his opponent in an argument. It takes two to make a quarrel. When someone described his sick servant as undergoing torture, he asked, what for? What do they suppose they are going to get out of him? Someone was said to be going ahead in his studies. Let me see, he said, it is Plato, I think, who calls that making progress. Will we have a fine day? If God shall. Archaeist, curse not thy friend. He retorted, to a man who called him cursed instead of crusty. A man once used the phrase, I was trying to save his face. 
but is he in any danger of losing it, asked Socrates. Chided, said one man, chode, another. He disclaimed all acquaintance with either form. A person who volunteered but and if was commended for his generosity. Someone tried him with, why pleased, no, no, said he, that is too much of a good thing. I expect him momently, someone announced. A good phrase, he said, so is, minutely, we have excellent authority for, daily. Look you, said a man, meaning, look. Yes, what am I to look you at? He took up a man who said, yes, I can grapple with that, meaning that he understood, with, oh, you are going to throw me, are you? How? How shrill those fives are, said someone. Oh, come now, said Socrates. Seditions and strives, but not drums and fives. That man is heavily weighed, one man observed. You are quite right, there is no such word as weighted. He has thrived on it, someone assured him. The people among whom he has thrived cannot be very particular. People were very fond of calling it at one meant. Yes, all right, he would say, I know what it means. Mentioned being made of a black hen, he supposed that would be the female of the grey cock. Someone said he had been eating sparagrass. You'll be trying groundsel next, was his comment. But enough of Socrates. Shall we have another match on the old lines? I will give you nothing but first-rate ones. Have your eyes open. You will surely be able to do it now, after hearing such a list of them. Purr. I am by no means so sure of that. Proceed, however. Lie. Not sure. Well, but here you have the door broad open. Purr. Say on. Lie. I have said. Purr. Nothing that I observed. Lie. What, not observed, broad open. Purr. No. Lie. Well, what is to happen, if you cannot follow now? Every man can crow on his own haycock, and I thought this was yours. Did you get that haycock? You don't seem to attend, look at the mutual help Socrates and I have just given you. Purr. I am attending but you are so sly with them. Lie. Monstrous sly, is it not, to say, mutual, instead of, joint? Well, that is settled up, but for your general ignorance, I defy any god short of Apollo to cure it. He gives counsel to all who ask it, but on you that counsel is thrown away. Purr. Yes, I declare, so it was. Lie. Perhaps one at a time are too few. Purr. I think that must be it. Lie. How did one art get past you? Purr. Ah, uh, I didn't see it, again. Lie. By the way, do you know of anyone who is on the look-in for a wife? Purr. What are you talking about? Lie. Show me the man who is on the look-in, and I will show you a solacist. Purr. But what have I to do with solacists on the look-in for wives? Lie. Ah, if you knew that, you would be the man you pretend to be. So much for that. Now, if a man came to you and said that he had left his wife's home, would you stand that? Purr. Of course I should, if he had provocation. Lie. And if you caught him committing a solacism, would you stand it? Purr. Certainly not. Lie. Quite right too. We should never permit solecisms in a friend, but teach him better. Now, what are your feelings when you hear a man deprecating his own merits, and depreciating his friend's excessive gratitude? Purr. Feelings. Only that he shows a very proper feeling. Lie. Then, as you cannot feel the difference between deprecate and depreciate, shall we conclude that you are an ignoramus? Purr. Outrageous insolence. Lie. Outrageous. I shall be, ere much, if I go on talking to you. Dot. Now I should have said that, ere much, was a blunder, but it does not strike you so. Purr. Oh, stop, for goodness sake. 
Look here, try this way, I want to get my profit out of it too. Lie. Well. Purr. Suppose you were to go through all the blunders you say I have missed, and tell me what is the right thing for each. Lie. Good gracious, no, it would take us till midnight. No, you can look those out for yourself. Meanwhile, we had better take fresh ones, as we have only a quarter of an hour, by the way, never pronounce the H in hour, that sounds dreadful. Then as to that outrage which you say I have committed upon you. If I were to speak of an outrage committed against you, that would be another thing. Purr. Would it? Lie. Yes, an outrage upon you must be committed upon you personally, in the shape of blows, interference with your liberty, or the like. An outrage against you is upon something that belongs to you, he who does an outrage upon your wife, child, friend, or slave, does it against you. This distinction, however, does not apply to inanimate things. An outrage against is a legitimate phrase with them, as when Plato talks in the symposium of an outrage against a proverb. Purr. Ah, I see now. Lie. Do you also see that the exchange of one for the other is a solecism? Purr. Yes, I shall know that for the future. Lie. And if a person were to use interchange there instead of exchange, what would you take him to mean? Purr. Just the same. Lie. Why, how can they be equivalent? Exchange is merely the substitution of one expression for another, the improper for the proper, whereas interchange involves a false statement 110. Purr. I see now. Exchange is the use of a loose instead of a precise expression, while interchange is the use of both expressions, each in the other's place. Lie. These subtleties are not unpleasing. Similarly, when we are concerned with a person, it is in our own interest, but when we are concerned for him, it is in his. It is true the phrases are sometimes confused, but there are those who observe the distinction. And it is as well to be on the safe side. Purr. Quite true. Lie. Now, can you tell me the difference between setting and sitting, or between be seated and sit? Purr. No, but I have heard you say that sit yourself is a barbarism. Lie. Yes, quite so, but now I tell you that be seated is not the same as sit. Purr. Why, what may the difference be? Lie. When a man is on his legs, you can only tell him to be seated, but if he is seated already, you can tell him to sit still. Sit where thou art, we find us seats elsewhere. It means, remain sitting, you see. Here again we have to say that it is a mistake to reverse the expressions. And as to the set and sit, surely it is the whole difference between transitive and intransitive? Purr. That is clear enough, go on, this is the way to teach. Lie. Or the only way you can learn. Well, do you know what a historian is? The explanation of this point appears to have dropped out of the Mises, translators. Purr. Oh, yes, I quite see, after your lucid explanation. Lie. Now I dare say you think servility and servitude are the same. But I am aware of a considerable difference between them. Purr. Namely. Lie. The first depends on yourself, the other on someone else. Purr. Quite right. Lie. Oh, you will pick up all sorts of information, if you give up thinking you know more than you do. Purr. I give it up from this moment. Lie. Then we will break off for the present, and take the rest another time. H and F. Notes explanatory of allusions to persons, and C. These notes are collected here instead of being put at the foot of pages in order to avoid repetition, and also that they may not be obtruded on those who do not need them. No connected account of the persons or things commented upon is to be looked for, the intention being merely to give the particular facts that will make Lucian's meaning clear. When a name is not given, it may be taken either that we are unable, or that we have considered it unnecessary, 
to add to the information contained in the text. References in italics are to pieces in the translation, the number, if any, indicating the section. References in capitals are to articles in these notes. The notes are intended to be used by the reader whenever he wishes for information upon a name. Reference is not made to them at the foot of pages in the text unless there would be a difficulty in knowing what name to consult. Academy A grove or garden in the suburbs of Athens, in which Plato taught, afterwards used as a name for the school of philosophy that acknowledged him as its founder. For Plato's characteristic doctrines, see under Plato. Lucian's references to the school are, 1, as heuristic or argumentative. The Socratic method of eliciting truth being by discussion, and the academy being descended from Socrates through Plato, it might be regarded as especially argumentative. 2. As disputing the possibility of judgment, and urging suspension. The academy is divided into the old, middle, and new, of which the middle academy neglected the positive teachings of Plato, and developed rather the destructive analytic method of Socrates. Approaching nearly to the position of the skeptics or followers of Pyro. Achilles. Son of Peleus and the goddess Thetis. When his mother gave him the choice between a glorious life and a long one, he chose the former, but, when interviewed by Odysseus on the occasion of the latter's visit to Hades, regretted his choice. Among the arms given him by Thetis was a shield on which Hephaestus had represented various scenes of peace and war. Actaeon. A huntsman who, having seen Artemis bathing, was punished by being torn to pieces by his own hounds. Adonis. A beautiful youth beloved by Aphrodite. Died of a wound received from a boar on Lebanon, but was allowed to spend half each year with Aphrodite on earth. Aeacus. A son of Zeus, deified after death, and given authority in Hades. Eden. A woman who, having accidentally killed her own son, was compassionately changed by Zeus into a nightingale. Aegis. Zeus's goat-skin shield, which he transferred to Athene, who attached to it the head of Medusa. See Gorgons. Aegyptus. Brother of Danaeus, who for fear of him fled with his fifty daughters from Libya to Argos. Aeneans. An insignificant Greek tribe south of Thessaly. Eschines, 1. Born 389 BC. The great rival of Demosthenes. Son of a humble elementary schoolmaster. Accused by Timarchus, retorted by convicting him of immorality. According to Demosthenes, was in the pay of Philip of Macedon, and a traitor to Athens. Eschines, 2. A philosopher, pupil of Socrates, and author of dialogues. Aetian. A painter, probably contemporary with Lucian, and not to be identified with the Aetian, flourished 350 BC, mentioned by Pliny. Agamemnon. King of Mycenae and leader of the Greeks against Troy. After his return, was murdered by his wife Clytemnestra and her paramour Aegisthus. His son Orestes and daughter Electra, with Pylades, avenged him. Agathobulus. Unknown philosopher, teacher of Demonax and Peregrine. Agathon. Athenian tragic poet, friend of Euripides and Plato. Agenor. King of Phoenicia, son of Posidon, father of Cadmus and Europa. Aglaea. The Bright One, One of the Graces, Mother of Nereus. Ajax, 1. Son of Telamon, greatest Greek warrior next to Achilles. Claimed the latter's arms after his death, and when they were adjudged to Odysseus went mad, slew sheep in mistake for Greeks, and then committed suicide. Ajax, 2. Son of Oileus, King of Locris. Slain by Posidon for defying his power when wrecked. Alcaeus. The wrestler mentioned in the way to write history, 9, probably lived about 40 AD. Alchemines. Athenian sculptor, 428 BC. Alcestis. Wife of Admetus. He was allowed by Apollo to find a substitute to die instead of him. She alone consented, died, and was brought back from the dead by Heracles. Alcibiades. 
son of Clinias, Athenian statesman, and chief instigator of the disastrous Sicilian expedition. Banished for sacrilege. Afterwards recalled with great rejoicings. Alcinous. King of Phaeacia. Entertained Odysseus on his way home from Troy, and heard the story of his adventures. Alcmena. Wife of Amphitryon, and mother, by Zeus, of Heracles. Alexander, one, of Macedon. Son of Philip and Olympias, but represented by legend as begotten by Ammon, the Libyan Zeus. Taught by Aristotle. Killed his best friend Clytus in his cups, carried about Callisthenes, suspected of plotting, in an iron cage. Overthrew the empire of Darius at Issus and Arbela, 333 and 331 BC married the Bactrian Roxana among others. In India, defeated King Porus and took the virgin fortress Aornus. Died at Babylon, handing his ring to Perdiccas. Alexander, too, of Ferry. Tyrant. Murdered 357 BC by his wife Thebe. Alexander, three, of Abinuticus. The narrative of Lucian would appear to be a mere romance, were it not confirmed by some medals of Antoninus and M. Aurelius, Smith's Dictionary of Biography and Mythology. Alpheus. River in Arcadia and Elis, partly subterranean, which gave rise to the tale. Amalthea. A nymph who fed Zeus with goat's milk. The goat's horn, broken off by Zeus, became the cornucopia. Ammon. See Zeus. Amphion. When he played the lyre, the stones moved of their own accord to make the walls of Thebes. Amphitrite. Wife of Posidon. Amphitryon. Husband of Alcmena and putative father of Heracles. Anasium. Temple of Castor and Pollux. Anacarsis. Scythian prince. Visited Athens about 594 BC. Anacreon. Lyric poet of Teos. Sang of love and wine. Died 478 BC. Anaxagoras. Philosopher accused of impiety at Athens 450 BC saved by Pericles. Anaxarchus. Philosopher, accompanied Alexander into Asia, 334 BC. Andromeda. Her mother Cassiopeia, queen of Ethiopia, set her beauty's praise above the sea nymphs, for which Andromeda had to be exposed to a sea monster. She was rescued by Perseus. Antia. See Bellerophon. Antiochus. King of Syria, 280-261 BC. Called Soter after his victory over the Galatians. Son of Seleucus, fell in love with his stepmother Stratonis, whom his father ceded to him. Antiope. Mother by Zeus of Amphion and Zethus. Antipater. Macedonian general, left as regent by Alexander in Macedonia, of which he became king after Alexander's death. Antisthenes. Athenian philosopher, about 400 BC founder of the Cynics. Anubis. Dog-headed Egyptian god, identified by the Greeks with Hermes. Anytus. See under Socrates. Aornus. The word means unvisited by birds. See under Alexander, 1. Aphrodite. Goddess of love, born of the sea foam, mother by Zeus of Eros, by Bacchus of Priapus, by Hermes of Hermaphroditus, and by the mortal Anchises of Aeneas. Her girdle or cestus conferred magic beauty on the wearer. Often called golden by Homer. Worshipped under the titles of Urania, heavenly, and Pandemus, common. Wife of Hephaestus. Apis. Egyptian bull god. Some details are given in Sacrifice, 15. Apollo. Son of Zeus and Leto. Represented as youthful, beautiful, beardless, long-haired. Brother of Artemis and father of Asclepius by Caronis. Doctor, harpist, president of the muses, archer, sender and averter of pestilence, giver of oracles at Delphi, and Lover of Daphne, who changed to a laurel to escape him, Hyacinth, 
whom he accidentally killed with a quoit, and Brancus, to whom he gave oracular power at Didyma, afterwards called Brancidae. When Zeus slew Asclepius with the thunderbolt, Apollo killed the Cyclopes who had forged it, he was punished by being compelled to serve as a mortal on earth, where he kept the flocks of Admetus, and built the wall of Troy for Laomedon. Called Lycian as slayer of wolves, and Pythian from Pytho or Delphi. Apollonius, 1, Rhodius. An Alexandrian poet, 200 BC, author of the Argonautica. Apollonius, 2, of Tyana. Born 4 BC. A Pythagorean who pretended to miraculous powers. Apollonius, 3. Stoic philosopher, sent for by Antoninus Pius to instruct his adopted son M. Aurelius. Archelaus, king of Macedonia, 413 to 399 BC. A great patron of letters. Archias. An actor employed by Antipater for political purposes. Archilochus. An iambic poet of Paras, 690 BC. Areopagus. An ancient Athenian council and law court. Ares. God of war, son of Zeus and Hera. Intrigued with Aphrodite. Aridi. Wife of Alcinous. Arethusa. A nymph. Pursued by the river god Alpheus, fled to Sicily, where she became a fountain. Argo. The ship that went on the quest of the Golden Fleece, built by Athene, who inserted a plank from the Dodonian oak, which gave prophecies. Argus. The hundred eyed guard of Io. Ariadne. See Theseus. Arion. Famous Harper, 625 BC. For his story, see Dialogues of Sea Gods, 8. Aristarchus. See Homer. Aristides. Athenian statesman called the Just. Great rival of Themistocles. Died poor. Date of death, 468 BC. Aristippus. Philosopher of Cyrene, founder of the Cyrenaic school. See Cyrenaics. Disciple of Socrates. Spent some time at the court of Dionysius. Flourished 370 BC. Aristogiton, 1. With Harmodius, slew Hipparchus, brother of the Athenian tyrant Hippias, 514 BC. The tyranny fell shortly after, and the two friends had the credit of liberating Athens. Aristogiton, 2. Athenian orator and adversary of Demosthenes. Aristophanes. Athenian writer of comedy, 444 to 380 BC Socrates is ridiculed in his clouds. Aristotle. Philosopher, 384 to 322 BC founder of the Peripatetic school, which c. taught Alexander of Macedon and Demosthenes. Armenia. The Parthian War waged by Lucius Verus, 162-165 AD, was begun in consequence of a Roman legions being cut to pieces in Armenia by Vologesus, king of Parthia. Arian. A Bithynian philosopher and historian, pupil of Epictetus. He was made a Roman citizen and attained the consulship. Wrote the Anabasis Alexandri, and the Discourses and Enchiridion of Epictetus. Artemis. Daughter of Leto and sister of Apollo. Virgin, Huntress. Under the name Alithia, presides over childbirth. Worshipped at Towery in Scythia with human sacrifice. Artemisium. The scene of Athenian naval victories before Salamis over the Persians. Asclepius. Son of Apollo and Caronus. The god of medicine and health for restoring the dead to life was slain by Zeus with the thunderbolt. Afterwards admitted to Olympus as a god. Astyanax. Infant son of Hector and Andromache. Flung from the walls of Troy by the Greeks. Athamas. By Hera's command married Nephili, by whom he had Phrixus and Hela. His begetting Lurchus and Melisertes by the mortal Eno offended Hera, who drove him mad. Eno threw herself with Melisertes into the sea, and both became sea gods, 
called Leucothea and Polemon. Phrixus and Hela, saved by Nephili from Eno's persecution, had fled upon the golden ram, from which Hela falling gave her name to the Hellespont. Athene sprang full armed from the brain of Zeus, remained a virgin, carried Medusa's head on the aegis given to her by Zeus, personification of power and wisdom, gave breath to the men molded of clay by Prometheus. Special patroness of Athens, where she was known as Polias, or city goddess. Athenians. The Athenians thought themselves autochthenes, produced from the very soil of Attica. Athos. Mountain in Chalcidice, at the foot of which Xerxes cut a canal for his armada against Greece, to avoid the storms that prevailed there. Atropus. Sea Fates. Attalus II. King of Pergamum poisoned by his son or nephew. Athis. A History of Attica, by Philochorus, about 300 BC. Attis. Phrygian shepherd, beloved by Rhea, who made him vow celibacy. Being driven mad by Rhea for violating this vow, he mutilated himself, and this became the custom among Rhea's priests, the Gali. Augeus. See Heracles. Aulus. A port in Boeotia. C. Iphigenia. Aurelius, M. Roman Emperor, 161 to 180 AD. Engaged in war with the Marcomanni and Quadi for almost the whole of his reign. Bacchus. C. Dionysus. Bacchis. A prophet or several prophets, to whom oracles were attributed. Bellerophon. A Corinthian prince. Having slain a man, fled for purification to Pretus of Argos, whose wife Antia fell in love with him and, being repulsed, accused him to Pretus. Pretus sent him to the king of Lycia with a letter requesting his execution. To ensure his death, the king told him to kill the monster Chimera, goat, serpent, and lion, which the winged horse Pegasus, however, enabled him to do. Bendis a Thracian goddess, identified with the Greek Artemis. Brancus. See Apollo. Brasidas. The most distinguished Spartan in the first part of the Peloponnesian War. Trying to dislodge Demosthenes from Pylos, ran his galley ashore, and fainted from the wounds received. Brimo. Grim. A name of Persephone. Briseis. Daughter of the Trojan Brises. Being captured, fell to Achilles's share, from whom she was taken by Agamemnon. Bules and Spurches. Two Spartans, given up to Xerxes to atone for his heralds having been slain, the king refused to retaliate. Bezirus. King of Egypt, who used to sacrifice all strangers to Zeus. When he attempted to offer Heracles, Heracles offered him. Cadmus. Came from Tyre, once an island, to Greece, bringing with him the Phoenician alphabet. Told at Delphi to follow a certain cow, and build a town where she should lie down, built the Cadmea, citadel of Thebes. Having slain a dragon that guarded a well, was told to sow its teeth, from which sprang the Sparty, or sown men, afterwards Thebans. Married Harmonia, by whom he had Semele and other children. Calamus. Sculptor, 440 BC. For Sosandra see note on Portrait Study, 4. Callanus. Indian Gymnosophist. Accompanied Alexander in India. Being ill at 83, burnt himself. Callisto. Beloved by Zeus. Turned by the jealous Hera into a bear, and by Zeus into the constellation of that name. Callimachus. Famous Alexandrian grammarian and poet. Wrote 800 works. 260 BC. Calimedon. Athenian orator in the Macedonian interest. Callisthenes. A philosopher, who, accompanying Alexander, offended him by rude criticism. The king had him carried about in chains, which caused his death by disease. Calypso. Nymph of Ogygia, where Odysseus was shipwrecked. Promised him immortality if he would remain, he refused, and the gods compelled her to let him go. Cambyses. 
son of Cyrus the Great, and king of Persia, 529-522 BC. Cassiopeia. C. Andromeda. Castalia. Fountain on Mount Parnassus, in which Apollo's priestess had to bathe before giving an oracle. Castor and Pollux. Also called Dioscuri, and Anax. Sons of Zeus and Leda, one mortal, the other immortal. The mortal being killed, the two were allowed to divide the other's immortality, spending alternate days in the upper and lower worlds. Pollux a great boxer. Patrons of sailors, appearing in storms as flames, and guiding the ship to safety. Worshipped especially at Sparta, where they were born. Sebes. Theban disciple of Socrates, wrote an allegorical picture of human life. Cecrops. The first king of Athens. Celsus. An Epicurean to whom Lucian addresses the Alexander. Origen, in replying to a treatise against Christianity written by a Celsus, accuses him of being an Epicurean. And Origen's Celsus has accordingly been identified with Lucian's, but from Origen's own account of Celsus's position there is reason to doubt whether he could have been an Epicurean. Ceramicus. A quarter in the northwest of Athens, both within and without the walls, which were here passed by the Dipylon or Double Gate. Cerberus. The three-headed dog that guarded Hades. Allowed Orpheus to pass, being charmed by the sound of his lyre. Circapes. Droll and thievish gnomes, who robbed Heracles in his sleep. Circean. King of Eleusis, wrestled with all strangers, killing those whom he overcame. Theseus threw and killed him. Cereceus. Heralds. A priestly family at Athens. Caraphon. See Socrates. Chirenia. Here Philip defeated the Athenians and Boeotians, and ended the liberty of Greece, 338 BC. Chaldeans. In general, Babylonians, in particular, wizards. Chairs. Athenian general, one of the commanders at Chirenia. Charmides. A favorite pupil of Socrates. Sharon. The ferryman of Hades, who conducts the souls of the dead across Styx and Acheron. Carapus. Bright eyed, father of the beautiful Nereus. Chimera. See Bellerophon. Chiron. A wise centaur who taught Achilles. Chryses. Trojan priest of Apollo, whose daughter Chryses was taken by the Greeks and given to Agamemnon. When he asked her from Agamemnon and was refused, he appealed to Apollo. Chrysippus. 280-207 BC regarded as the chief of the Stoic school, which see, though Zeno was the actual founder. Chris dash equals gold dash. As to Lucian's thrice-repeated allusion to his hellebore treatment, nothing seems to be known, it was a recognized cure for madness, perhaps he took it to cure himself of care for the ordinary human objects of pursuit. Cinerus. Son of Apollo, priest of Aphrodite, and father of Adonis. Cleanthes. Stoic philosopher. Lucian's account of his death in the runaways seems incorrect. Having been told to abstain from food for two days to cure an ulcer, he said that as he had advanced so far towards death, it was a pity to have the trouble over again, and continued to abstain till he died. Clearchus. Spartan commander of the 10,000 Greek mercenaries employed by Cyrus the Younger, their retreat under Xenophon is described in the Anabasis. Cleon. A bellicose Athenian demagogue in the Peloponnesian War, also employed as a general. Clinius. Father of Alcibiades. Clytus. See Alexander, 1. Clotho. See Fates. Cloud Cuckooland. A town built by the birds, in Aristophanes's play of that name. Clymene. Wife of Helios. Clytemnistra. Wife and murderer of Agamemnon, slain in revenge by her own son Orestes. Cocytus. Wailing, one of the rivers of Hades. Codrus. King of Athens. An oracle declared that Dorian's invading Attica should succeed, 
if the Attic King was spared. Codrus disguising himself contrived to be slain in their camp. Colossus. Statue at Rhodes of the Sun God Helios, 105 feet high. Carabans. Priests of Sibylle or Rhea, sometimes called descendants of Koriba, the goddess's son. Danced wildly with drum and cymbal. Kotito. The goddess of debauchery, whose festivals were celebrated during the night. Her priests were called Bapti. Cranium. An open place with a cypress grove outside Corinth. Crates. 320 BC. See Cynics. Creon. King of Thebes. A prominent figure in many tragedies. Creusa. A princess of Corinth. Jason was to marry her, having divorced Medea, who provided a poisoned robe, which Creusa putting on was burnt to death. Critias and Nesiotes. Sculptors slightly earlier than Phidias. Their group of the Tyrannicides, set up 477 BC, was famous. The passage in the rhetoricians Vaidmecum is the chief authority for their style. Croesus, King of Lydia, 560-546 BC. To test Apollo's oracle, he asked what he would be doing on a certain day. The answer was, boiling tortoise and lamb, which was correct. Thus convinced, he gave great gifts to the oracle, including golden bricks, and, acting on another oracle, which said that he by crossing the Halys should destroy a mighty empire, attacked Cyrus, king of Persia, who subdued and deposed him. Thus was verified the warning given to him by Solon, in the famous conversation reported in the Sharon. The story of his son Aedes is given in Zeus cross-examined, 12. His other son was born deaf and dumb, but when his father was in danger from Cyrus's soldiers, was enabled to say, do not kill the king. His name is a commonplace for wealth and vicissitudes. Cronides. Son of Cronus, i.e. Zeus. Cronosolon. Solon being known as a legislator, the name is meant to suggest, Cronus legislating through his mouthpiece the priest. Cronus. King of Heaven in the dynasty of the Titans, which preceded that of the gods. Deprived his father Uranus of his virility and of his government. Fearing dethronement from his own sons, he devoured them as soon as born, his wife Rhea, however, concealed from him Zeus, Posidon, and Pluto, the first of whom deposed him. The time of his reign was looked back to as the golden age of plenty, equality, and virtue. The Saturnalia, or feast of the Latin god Saturn, who was commonly identified with Cronus, was a symbolic revival of that golden age. Tejas. Author of, 1, A Long History of Persia, probably a really valuable work, and, 2, A Treatise on India, the fables mixed up in which caused him to be looked upon as an author who deserved no credit. He was a Greek physician at the court of Artaxerxes Neman. Flourished about 401 BC. Sibylle. See Rhea. Cyclopes. A one-eyed race of shepherds, or, according to another account, of smiths in the service of Hephaestus, in Etna. Polyphemus, the chief of them, was son of Posidon. Silarabes. A gymnasium in or near Argos, which would be unsuitable for cultivation. Synegyrus. Brother of Aeschylus. At Marathon, pursuing the defeated Persians, laid hold of one of their ships. His hand being cut off, substituted the other, that cut off, gripped it with his teeth. Cynics. A school of philosophers, so called either because Antisthenes the Athenian, their founder, born 444 BC. And a pupil of Socrates, taught in the gymnasium called the Sinusarges, or else because their mode of life was regarded as no better than that of a dog, CYN. Diogenes, Crates, Menippus, and, in his own time, Demonax, are mentioned by Lucian as favorable specimens of the school. Their ideal may be said to have been plain living and high thinking, virtue is the only good. The essence of virtue is self-control, pleasure is an evil if sought for itself. The dialogue called the Cynic gives a not unfair view of their asceticism. 
The Peregrine and the Runaways illustrate the abuses to which this philosophy was liable, owing to the small intellectual demand it made, and the pride it generated. The cynics were cosmopolitan, individualist, and outspoken. Their repulsive personal negligence, and their free use of their philosophic staves as offensive weapons, are often alluded to. Senuria. See Othriades. Cyrenaics. Aristippus, the founder of this school, was a disciple of Socrates, but developed only the practical side of his master's philosophy. Since the only things of which we can be absolutely certain are our sensations of pleasure and pain, all our actions should be calculated with a view to securing the one and avoiding the other. The principle is not so debased as it sounds, since there are higher and lower pleasures, present and future gratifications. Epicureanism and modern utilitarianism are developments. Cyrus. The Great. King of Persia, 559-529 BC. Daedalus. A famous artificer. He, with his son Icarus, fled from Minas, king of Crete, by means of wings fastened on with wax. He himself arrived safely in Italy. But Icarus flying too high, the wax melted, his wings dropped off, and he fell into the sea that was afterwards called after him. Danae. Daughter of Acrisius, upon whose name there is a jest in the Demonax, king of Argos. Her father, anxious that she should not have a child, confined her in a brazen tower, but, Zeus visiting her in a shower of gold, she gave birth to Perseus. Mother and child were thrown into the sea in a chest, but were saved. Danaids. When the fifty sons of Egyptus followed the daughters of Danaeus to Greece, and demanded them in marriage, Danaeus consented, but supplied each of them with a dagger to kill her husband on the bridal night. Their punishment was to pour water perpetually into a leaky cask. Daphne. See Apollo. Davis. Stock name for a slave in Greek comedies. Delphi. On the Gulf of Corinth, below Mount Parnassus, an oracle of Apollo, the most famous in Greece. Demades. An Athenian orator, in the Macedonian interest, but put to death by Antipater, 318 BC. Demi. An Athenian citizen was officially described by the addition of the names of his father, his Demi, and his tribe, to his own. The Demes were local divisions of Attica, like our parishes, the tribes were groupings, independent of locality, of these Demes into ten divisions for administrative purposes. Demeter. Sister of Zeus, mother of Persephone, goddess of the fruits of the earth, birth mother. Demetrius, 1. Poliorcetes. King of Macedonia, 294-287 BC. Demetrius, 2. A Platonic philosopher about 85 BC. Demetrius, 3. A distinguished Cynic philosopher, of Sunium, teacher of Demonax, and probably the hero of the story in the Toxaris. Democritus. A philosopher of Abdera, 460 to 361 BC. Famous as the author of the atomic theory, as the laughing philosopher, and for the wide extent of his knowledge. Demonax. A cynic and eclectic philosopher, senior contemporary of Lucian, from whose life all that is known of him is gathered. Demosthenes, 1. One of the most distinguished Athenian generals in the Peloponnesian War. C. Brasidas. Put to death by the Syracusans on the failure of the Sicilian expedition. Demosthenes, too. The Athenian orator. His father was a rich manufacturer of arms. Being defrauded by his guardians, took to oratory first for the purpose of suing them. His self-training is famous. The allusions in the Demosthenes are thus explained, he lived in a cave to study undisturbed, shaving half his head to keep him there. Studied his gestures in a mirror and corrected a shrug by hanging a naked sword over his shoulders improved his articulation and voice by holding pebbles in his mouth and shouting at the waves, took lessons from Satyrus the actor. Copied out Thucydides eight times. The great object of his life was to keep Greece and especially Athens free from subjection to Macedon. Deucalion and Pyrrha. 
the two who survived, according to the Greek flood legend, to repeople the earth. Diasia Festival of Zeus at Athens Diogenes 412-323 BC His father was a banker of Sinope. He went to Athens and became a philosopher of the Cynic school, which see, as a disciple of Antisthenes. He is said to have lived in a tub. Diomede. One of the chief Greek heroes at the siege of Troy. Dion. A citizen of Syracuse under the two Dionysii, when Plato visited Dionysius I, Dion became his disciple, being afterwards banished by Dionysius II, he returned and expelled the tyrant. Dionysia. There were four annual festivals in honor of Dionysus at Athens. The great Dionysia was the chief occasion for the production of new tragedies and comedies. Dionysius I and II. Father and Son, Tyrants of Syracuse, 405-343 BC. The elder was a great patron of literature, and himself wrote verses and tragedies. Dionysus, or Bacchus. Son of Zeus and the Theban Semele. For his birth see Semele. Traveled through Egypt, Asia, and K. Introducing the vine and punishing all who slighted his power. His female worshippers were known as Bacantes, who roamed the country with disheveled locks, carrying the thyrsus and crying Evo. Diapiths. An Athenian commander frequently employed against Philip of Macedon. Dioscuri. See Castor. Diatima. A priestess at Mantinea, called by Socrates, in Plato's Symposium, his instructress in the art of love. Dodona. Ancient Oracle of Zeus in Epirus, where responses were given by the rustling leaves of the sacred trees. Dociatus. Author of two enigmatic poems whose verses are so arranged as to present the profile of an altar. Drachma. Greek coin worth ten pence. Draco. Ancient Athenian lawgiver, 621 BC. Dramo. Stock name for a slave. Electra. See Agamemnon. Eleusis. A town a few miles from Athens, where the mysteries were celebrated. 11. The. The board at Athens in charge of prisons and executions. Empedocles. A Pythagorean philosopher, 444 BC. His skill in medicine and natural knowledge caused him to be credited with supernatural powers. He fell or threw himself into the crater of Etna, as some say that by his sudden disappearance he might be believed to be a god, but his brazen sandal was thrown up and betrayed him. Empusa. A monstrous specter believed to devour human beings, and capable of assuming different forms. Endymion. A beautiful Carian youth with whom Selene fell in love. Enopeus. A river and river god in Thessaly. Ephialtes and Otis. The two giants who piled Asa upon Olympus and Pelion upon Asa to scale heaven. Epictetus. A celebrated Stoic philosopher of the first century AD expelled from Rome with the other philosophers by Domitian. His discourses in Enchiridion, still much read, are the notes of his teaching collected by his pupil Arian. Epicureans. The school of philosophy instituted by Epicurus, 342-270 BC. He combined the physics of Democritus with the ethics of Aristippus, adopting the atomic theory of the former. He deduced from it the indifference or non-existence of gods, and he qualified Aristippus's exaltation of pleasure by preferring mental and permanent to bodily and immediate gratification. Their religious attitude caused them to be held in abhorrence by other schools. Epimenides Poet and prophet of Crete The Rip Van Winkle of antiquity, but a historical character. Epimetheus, afterthought, was the brother of Prometheus, forethought. Erechtheus II Ancient king of Athens. Posidon, offended by the slaying of his son Eumalpus, demanded the sacrifice of one of Erechtheus' daughters, one being drawn by lot, the other three would not survive her. Erechthonius, or Erechtheus I, king of Athens, and son of Hephaestus. His mother was not Athene, but Gu. 
Eridanos. Greek name of the Pau. Irigeni. See Icarus. Irenes. Also called Furies, Eumenides, and dread goddesses, employed in punishing the wicked, whether in Hades or on earth, where they represent the pangs of conscience. Eris. The goddess of discord, for her story, see Dialogues of Sea Gods, v. Eros. God of love, the Latin Cupid. Lucian plays with the two accounts of his birth and age. According to one, he was older than all the Olympian gods, according to the other, son of Zeus and Aphrodite. Ethiopians. The gods were in the habit of visiting the blameless Ethiopians and being feasted by them, according to Homer. Eubulus. The most influential statesman of the Athenian party opposed to Demosthenes and in favor of peace with Philip. Euctemon. An Athenian suborned by Demosthenes's enemy Midias to bring against Demosthenes a charge of deserting while on military service. Eumolpus. A Thracian bard who joined the Eleusinians in an expedition against Athens, but was defeated and slain. He was regarded as the founder of the Eleusinian mysteries, and his family, the Eumolpidae, continued to be the priests of Demeter there. Euphorbus. See Pythagoras. Euphorian. Epic poet of Chalcis, 276 BC. Eupolis. Among the most famous poets of the old comedy, with Aristophanes and Cratinus. Euripides. The most philosophic of the Greek tragedians. Born 480 BC, died 406 BC. At the court of Archelaus, king of Macedonia, whither he had retired from Athens about 408 BC. Europa. Daughter of the Phoenician king Aegenor, and sister of Cadmus, carried away by Zeus, who assumed the form of a white bull. Eurobatus. An Ephesian who betrayed Croesus to Cyrus, and became a byword for treachery. Eurydice. See Orpheus. Eurystheus. King of Tyrans. See Heracles. Eurytus. King of Echalia. Challenged Apollo to a match with the bow, and was killed for his presumption. Euxene. The hospitable, Epsilon Xi Epsilon Nu Omicron, a euphemism for, the inhospitable, Xi Epsilon Nu Omicron. The Black Sea. Exadius. One of the Lapithae, who were assisted by Nestor in their fight against the centaurs. Fates. The three sisters to whose power even the gods must submit, and who regulate every human life. Clotho holds the distaff, Lachesis spins, and Atropus cuts the thread of life. Lucian also gives them other functions. Favorinus. A famous sophist, contemporary with Demonax, whose jests against him depend on the fact that he was supposed to be a eunuch. Galatea. The milkwhite, a Nereid, loved by Polyphemus. Gali. See Addis. Ganymede. A beautiful Trojan youth, beloved by Zeus, and carried off by him to be the god's cupbearer. Gu. Earth, wife of Uranus, heaven, mother of Cronus, Rhea, and the other titans. Gerion. A three-bodied Spanish giant. See Heracles. Giants. The brood that sprang from the blood of Uranus when mutilated. They made war on heaven, armed with rocks and trees, but the gods destroyed them and buried them under volcanoes. Glaucus. A famous boxer. Glycera. Stock name for a courtesan. Gods. The twelve were Zeus, Posidon, Apollo, Ares, Hephaestus, Hermes, Hera, Athene, Artemis, Aphrodite, Hestia, Demeter. Gorgias. Orator and sophist, of Leontini in Sicily, 5th century BC. He is a character in one of Plato's dialogues. Gorgons. Three sisters with snaky hair, brazen claws, wings, scales, and k. Medusa, the only mortal one, was slain by Perseus with Athene's help, to whom he gave the head, which had the power of petrifying all who looked upon it, after using it against the sea monster. Gyges. A Lydian who found a ring that being turned rendered him invisible. 
By its means he usurped the Lydian throne, which he held 716 to 678 BC. His wealth was proverbial. Gilippus. The Spartan chiefly instrumental in defeating the Sicilian expedition of the Athenians. Harmonia. Daughter of Ares and Aphrodite, wife of Cadmus. Harpies. Monstrous birds with women's faces, sent by Zeus to torment Phineas by defiling and carrying off all food placed on his table. Hecate. A deity attendant on Persephone in Hades. Goddess of crossroads and much invoked by witches. For Hecate's supper, and, dining with Hecate, see note on Dialogues of the Dead, I. Hecuba. Wife of Priam, a character in many Greek tragedies. Hegesias. Sculptor. See Critias, the description of whom applies to him also. Helen. Most of her history will be found in Dialogues of the Gods, XX. Her abduction by Paris caused the Trojan War, after which she returned to Menelaus. Helios. God of the Sun, one of the Titans. Hele. See Athamas. Hellebore. See Chrysippus. Hellespont. See Xerxes. Hephaestion. A Macedonian, the special friend of Alexander, who caused divine honors to be paid him after his death, 325 BC. Hephaestus. Son of Zeus and Hera, god of fire and of metalworking, having his forge in Etna. Hera. Daughter of Cronus and Rhea, wife and sister of Zeus, queen of heaven. Heracles. Son of Alcmena, who bore twins, the divine Heracles son of Zeus, and the mortal Iphicles son of her husband Amphitryon. Married Megara, but, driven mad by the jealous Hera, killed their children. To expiate the crime entered the service of Eurystheus for twelve years, and performed for him twelve labors, among which were, slaying of Hydra, as two heads sprang for each cut off, Iolaus assisted him by searing the stumps. Shooting of Stymphalian birds, capture of Diomedes' man-eating horses, cleansing of the stables of Augeus, slaying of Nemean lion, whose skin he always afterwards wore. Driving away of Geryon's oxen, on which expedition he erected the pillars of Hercules at the Straits of Gibraltar. Other incidents, he went down to Hades to rescue Alcestis, founded and presided at the Olympic Games, held up the heavens for Atlas. Served with omphily in woman's dress to atone for the murder, in a fit of madness, of his friend Iphidus, while drinking wine with Pholus, was attacked by the other centaurs and slew them. His last wife, Diana, being jealous gave him a poisoned shirt, and in the resulting agony he caused Philoctetes to build a pyre and burn him on Mount Ida, leaving his bow and arrows to the boy. Heraclitus a physical philosopher of Ephesus, about 500 BC conceived fire as the origin of all things, and continual movement as the necessary condition of existence. Known as the weeping philosopher, in opposition to Democritus, the laughing. Hermagoras. Hermes of the market, a statue of Hermes in the Athenian marketplace. Hermaphroditus. See Aphrodite. Hermes. Son of Zeus and Maya. Messenger, cupbearer, porter, crier, and k of the gods. God of windfalls, trade, thievery, music, and speech. He is represented with wings on his sandals and hat, and with the caduceus, a staff entwined with serpents. For his slaying of Argus, see Dialogues of the Gods, 3. He is charged with the conducting of the dead to Hades said to have been born on Mount Silene in Arcadia. Identified with the dog-headed Egyptian god Anubis. Hermocrates. The Syracusan most energetic in resisting the Sicilian expedition. Herod's Atticus. Born about 104 AD. The most famous rhetorician of his time. Used his great wealth in conferring benefits on the Greek towns, especially Athens, the aqueduct at Olympia is an instance. Mourned his wife Regilla and his favorite Pollux in the manner described in the Demonax. Herodotus. Of Halicarnassus, born 484 BC. Wrote in the Ionic dialect a history of the Greco-Persian War, 
in nine books, to which the names of the muses were given in recognition of their excellence. Heroes. Used in two senses, one, of demigods, born of a mortal and an immortal parent. Two, of the chiefs of the Trojan War period. Hesiod. Of Ascra in Boeotia, about 850 BC. According to his own account he was originally a shepherd, who, tending his flocks on Helicon, received from the muses a laurel branch, and with it the gift of poetry. His chief poems are The Works and Days, a didactic agricultural poem, and The Theogony, a work on the genealogies of gods and heroes. The passage on virtue so often alluded to by Lucian runs as follows, vice you may have in abundance with ease. Smooth is the road to it, and very near it dwells. But this side of virtue the immortal gods have set much toil. Long and steep is the track to it, and rough at its setting out, but when a man has reached the top, then is its hardness turned to ease. Hymerius. An Athenian orator, who opposed Macedonia after the death of Alexander, and fled to escape being surrendered to Antipater. Being caught by Archias, he was put to death. Hippias. A sophist of Elis, able but vain, contemporary of Socrates. A character in two of Plato's dialogues. Hippoclides. An Athenian of the 6th century BC, lost his chance of marrying the daughter of Clisthenes' tyrant of Sicyon by dancing on his head, and remarked that Hippoclides did not care. Hippocrates. A famous physician of Cos, 469 to 357 BC. Hippocrene and Almium. Fountains on Mount Helicon sacred to the Muses. Hippolyta. See Theseus. Hippolytus. Son of Theseus and Hippolyta. His stepmother Phaedra fell in love with him, and being rejected accused him to his father. Theseus believed and asked Posidon to destroy him. He was thrown from his chariot and dragged to death by his horses, frightened at a monster sent by Posidon. Hipponax. Greek iambic poet, 546 to 520 BC. Homer. His poems formed the basis of Greek education and religion. Lucian perpetually quotes him, and refers to the questions of his birthplace and blindness. Famous ancient Homeric critics were Zoilus, called Homeromastics, Xenodotus, and Aristarchus. Hyacinth. See Apollo. Hydra. See Heracles. Hylas. Beautiful youth, beloved by Heracles, and carried off by the water nymphs. Hymenaeus. The god of marriage. Hymetus. Mountain of Attica, famous for marble and bees. Hyperbolus. A disreputable Athenian demagogue, murdered 411 BC. Hyperboreans. A mythical people dwelling beyond the north wind in perpetual sunshine and happiness. Magical powers were attributed to them. Hype rides. Athenian orator, generally acting with Demosthenes, though he accused him on one occasion. His tongue was cut out and he was executed by Antipater. Iambulus. A Greek writer on India, sufficiently characterized in the true history, 3. Oceanica, is not an actual title. Iapetus. A titan, brother of Cronus, and father of Prometheus. Icarius. An Athenian who received Dionysus in Attica and learned from him the cultivation of the vine. Some peasants to whom he gave wine slew him in drunkenness. His daughter Irigony was led to his grave by his dog Mera, and hanged herself on the tree under which he lay. Dionysus placed the three in heaven as Arcturus, the virgin, and Procyon, the lesser dog star. Icarus. See Deadless. Ida. Mountain close to Troy. Elysis. A small river at Athens. Elithia. Goddess of childbirth, generally identified with Artemis. Eno. See Athemus. Io. Daughter of Anacus, king of Argos. Zeus in love with her and changed her to a heifer for concealment, Hera discovering it placed her under the care of Argus, who however was slain by Hermes at Zeus's command. 
Io swam to Egypt, conducted by Hermes, and there bore a son to Zeus. Iolaus. Nephew of Heracles, and helped him against the Hydra. Restored to youthful vigor by Hebe. Iphigenia. Daughter of Agamemnon, was to be sacrificed to Artemis to secure the passage of the Greek fleet to Troy. But Artemis substituted a heart, and transported her to Towery in Scythia, where as priestess she had to sacrifice all strangers. She saved her brother Orestes, on the point of being thus immolated, and fled with him to Greece. Iris. Goddess of the rainbow, sometimes charged with messages from heaven to earth. Iris. The beggar in the Odyssey who boxes with Odysseus. Isis. Egyptian goddess, sometimes identified with Io. Ismenus. The river of Thebes. Isocrates. 436-338 BC. The greatest of Greek oratorical writers and teachers, but debarred from speaking by timidity and a weak voice. Ixion. King of the Lapithae, admitted by Zeus to the table of the gods, his story will be found in Dialogues of the Gods, 6. Labdacids. Laius, Oedipus, Idiocles and Polynices, Antigone and Ismene, the subjects of many Greek tragedies, were descended from Labdacus the Theban. Laertes. Father of Odysseus and King of Ithaca. Lais. A famous courtesan of Corinth. Laius. King of Thebes and father of Oedipus, who slew him in ignorance of his identity, and so fulfilled an oracle. Laomedon. See Apollo. Lapathy. A Thessalian people. When they invited the centaurs to the marriage feast of Pyrithoas, who was one of them, a quarrel and bloodshed arose. Leda. Wife of Tyndareus, king of Sparta, loved by Zeus, who took the form of a swan. She produced two eggs, from one of which came Pollux and Helen, children of Zeus, and from the other Castor and Clytemnestra, of Tyndareus. Lemnian women. Having offended Aphrodite, were abandoned by their husbands, and in revenge murdered all their male relations. Leonidas. The king of Sparta who held Thermopylae with a small force against all the host of Xerxes till nearly all his men were slain, 480 BC. Leisthenes. Commander of the Greeks in the Lamian War, for emancipation after Alexander's death. Lethe. One of the rivers of Hades, of which all must drink and forget their lives on earth. Lucian, however, like other writers, does not trouble himself about this forgetfulness when it is inconvenient. There is also a river of the name in Spain, to which perhaps Sharon refers in the voyage to the lower world. Leto. A goddess loved by Zeus, and regarded with jealousy by Hera, who set the serpent Pytho to watch her, and induced the earth to refuse her a place in which to be delivered of her children. Positon solved the difficulty by bringing up Delos from the depths of the sea and fixing it. Here Leto gave birth to Apollo and Artemis. Apollo afterwards slew Pytho. Leto was insulted by Niobe, daughter of Tantalus, proud of her seven sons and seven daughters, she was avenged by Apollo and Artemis, who shot all Niobe's children, and Niobe wept till she turned to stone. Eucothea. See Athamas. Lotus. The plant of which he who ate lost all wish of returning home. Lyceum. See Peripatetics. Lycophron. Poet and grammarian 270 BC. His poem Alexandra or Cassandra consists of supposed oracles of Cassandra, of no poetic value, but forms an inexhaustible mine of grammatical, historical, and mythological erudition. Lycurgus, 1. Ancient lawgiver at Sparta, who established the constitution and training that gave Sparta its military preeminence, 884 BC. Lycurgus, 2. Attic orator, a warm supporter of Demosthenes. Lincius. One of the Argonauts. Could distinguish small objects at nine miles. Lysimachus. One of Alexander's generals, succeeded to Thrace on the division of the Macedonian Empire. His wife Arsino made him believe that his son Agathocles was plotting against him, and he put him to death. 
Lysippus. A great sculptor, of Sicyon, in the time of Alexander. Meandrius. Secretary to Polycrates, tyrant of Samos, to whose power he succeeded in 522 BC. Magi. A priesthood among the Medes and Persians, founded by Zoroaster. Maya. Mother of Hermes. Malthas. Stock name for a courtesan. Mandrobulus. Of Samos. He found a great treasure, his gratitude for which was expressed at the time with an offering of a golden sheep, on the first anniversary of the event with a silver one, on the second with a copper, and on the third with none at all. Marathon. A village in Attica, the scene of a great victory of the Athenians over the Persians in 490 BC. Margots. Hero of a comic epic poem, formerly supposed to be Homer's. His name became proverbial for stupidity. Marcius. A Phrygian satyr, who challenged Apollo to a musical contest, and being defeated by him was flayed alive. Mausolus. King of Korea, 377-353 BC. His wife Artemisia raised a splendid monument to him after his death. Medea. Daughter of Eats king of Colchis, and famous for her skill in witchcraft. Falling in love with Jason when he came to Colchis for the Golden Fleece, she assisted him to obtain it, and followed him to Greece as his wife. When Jason afterwards deserted her for the daughter of Creon, she revenged herself by slaying her own children by him, and his second wife. Milampus. A seer, whose ears were cleansed by some young snakes that he had preserved from death, with the result that he was enabled to understand the language of birds. Meliager. Son of Enus, king of Caledon, and leader of the heroes who slew the boar that Artemis, offended at Enus' neglect in not asking her to a certain feast, had sent to ravage his country. Being in love with Atlanta, he gave her the boar's hide, and subsequently slew his mother's brothers for taking it from her. To avenge their death, his mother Althea threw into the fire that fatal firebrand whose consumption, as she knew from the fates, must be followed by his death. Miletus. An obscure tragic poet, one of the accusers of Socrates. Melia. A Nereid, mother of the river god Ismenus. Melisertes. See Athamas. Menander. A distinguished Athenian poet of the New Comedy, 342-291 BC. Menelaus. Brother of Agamemnon, and Helen's husband. The abduction of Helen by the Trojan Paris was the cause of the Trojan War. Menippus. A Cynic philosopher, originally a slave, of Gadara in Coel Syria. His date is placed about 60 BC. It is probable that Lucian was much indebted to the writings of Menippus, which are now lost, though an imitation of them is still preserved in the Menippean satires of Varro. Among the titles of his works are A Visit to the Shades, Wills, and Letters of the Gods. He appears frequently as a character in Lucian's dialogues. Mentor. A famous silversmith, before 356 BC. Metrodorus. A distinguished Epicurean philosopher, 330-277 BC. Midas. A king of Phrygia, to whom Dionysus granted the power of changing all that he touched into gold. Being unable in consequence to obtain any nourishment, Midas was permitted to cancel this privilege by bathing in the Pactolus. Chosen as a judge in a musical contest between Pan and Apollo he decided against the latter, who changed his ears into those of an ass. Midias. A wealthy Athenian and a bitter enemy of Demosthenes, whose speech against him is extant. Milo. Of Croton, a famous athlete, of whom various feats of strength are recorded. Miltiades. Son of Simon. Commanded the Athenians at Marathon. He afterwards used the power entrusted to him for his private purposes, and the charges brought against him were better justified than is implied in slander. 29. Mina. A sum of money, pound four ones. 3d. Minus I. Son of Zeus and Europa, brother of Radamanthus. 
king and legislator of Crete and, after his death, a judge in Hades. Minus 2. Grandson of Minus I, and king of Crete. Made war on the Athenians and compelled them to send to Crete an annual tribute of seven youths and seven maidens, to be devoured by the Minotaur, the monstrous offspring of Pasiphae and a bull. See Theseus. Minotaur. C-2. Mithras. God of the sun among the Persians. Momus. Son of night, and god of criticism. Mormo. A female specter, used to frighten children with. Museus. The supposed author of various poetical works. His origin is doubtful. He is sometimes called the son of Orpheus. Muses. The goddesses of poetry, and of the arts and sciences. They were nine in number, and were the daughters of Zeus and Mnemosyne, memory. Mount Helican in Boeotia was their favorite haunt. Musonius Rufus. A celebrated Stoic philosopher, banished by Nero in 66 AD on the pretext of conspiracy. Maia. Of this daughter of Pythagoras we have no certain information. Myron. A celebrated sculptor, born about 480 BC. Mysteries, Eleusinian. Eumolpus, Musius, and Demeter, are all mentioned as the founders of these mysteries, in which were commemorated the rape of Persephone by Pluto, and the wanderings of Demeter in search of her. They were held annually, the greater at Eleusis and Athens, the lesser at Agri. Persons initiated at the lesser could only be admitted to the greater after a year's interval. A part of the greater mysteries, to which those only were admitted who had been fully initiated, and had taken the oath of secrecy, consisted of a torchlight procession from Athens to the temple of Demeter at Eleusis. After which the initiated were purified, repeated the oath of secrecy, and were admitted to the inner sanctuary of the temple. Of the secret doctrines there divulged nothing is known. Narcissus a youth so beautiful that he fell in love with his image reflected in a pool. Nausicaa. The beautiful daughter of Alcinous and Arate, who received Odysseus with kindness when cast up by the sea. Neleus. Of Sepsis, he is known to have been in possession of the Mises of Aristotle, and may therefore have been a patron of literature. Nemesis. Wrath, the goddess who avenges presumption. Neoptolemus, also called Pyrrhus, son of Achilles, after whose death the seer declared that Troy could not be taken without the help of his son. He distinguished himself in the taking. Nephili. See Athamas. Changed to a cloud after his desertion of her. Nereids. The sea nymphs, daughters of Nereus, a sea god. Nesiotes. See Critias. Nestor. Oldest and wisest of the Greek chiefs at Troy. His cup was one that scarce could another move from the table when it was full, but old Nestor lifted it with ease. Nicander. Grammarian, poet, and physician of Colophon, about 140 BC. Wrote Theriaca and Alexipharmica, works on poisons and antidotes. Nicias. The Athenian general in command of the Sicilian expedition, 415 BC put to death by the Syracusans. Nicostratus. A wrestler and double Olympic victor, about 40 AD. Niobe. See Leto. Nereus. A Greek at the siege of Troy, famous for beauty. Numa. Second king of Rome, his reign was marked by peace and the founding of religious institutions. Odysseus. Son of Laertes, King of Ithaca. To escape joining the Greeks against Troy, simulated madness by driving a plow for a chariot, with one ox and one horse. Polymedes exposed him by threatening Odysseus's son Telemachus with a sword, when he confessed. In revenge, he ruined Polymedes at Troy, convicting him by forged evidence of treacherous dealings with the enemy. When Agamemnon lost heart and was for returning, Odysseus prevailed on the Greeks not to give up. Took ten years getting home, detained by Calypso, by Circe, and otherwise. Circe enabled him to visit Hades and consult Tiresias. Escaped the sirens by stopping his crew's ears with wax, 
and having himself bound to the mast. Enus. C. Melieger. Olympia. In Ellis, the Olympic Games took place every four years, and, starting from 776 BC, from which time a record of them was kept, were used for dating events, under the name of Olympiads. The Games were the occasion of the largest gatherings of Greeks that took place. Olympias. Wife of Philip of Macedon and mother of Alexander. Olympium. A temple of Zeus at Athens, begun by the tyrant Pisistratus, 560-527 BC. But not finished till the time of Hadrian, 117-138 AD. Olympus, 1. A mountain separating Macedonia and Thessaly, the summit of which was the residence of the gods. Olympus, 2. A celebrated flute player of Phrygia. Omphali. See Heracles. Orestes. See Agamemnon. Orion. A giant and hunter of Boeotia. Blinded by Enopian for ill treatment of his daughter Merope, he recovered his sight by the help of Sedalion, who directed his eyes towards the rising sun. Orithia. Daughter of Erechtheus, king of Athens. Carried off by Boreas. Orpheus. A Thracian musician, son of the muse Calliope. His music charmed wild beasts, trees, and rocks, and prevailed upon Pluto to restore his wife Eurydice, on condition that Orpheus should not look back to see that she was following him, this condition not being observed, Eurydice remained in Hades. Orpheus was afterwards torn in pieces by the Thracian women, and his head and lyre thrown into the Hebrus, and carried to Lesbos. Osiris. An Egyptian king, deified after death, as the husband of Isis. Osros. Son of Vologesus I. A king of Parthia, engaged in war with the emperor Trajan. Othriades. The only survivor of the 300 Spartans who fought with 300 Argives for the possession of Thyria in Cenuria. Being left for dead by the two Argive survivors, he raised a trophy on the field, with an inscription in his own blood, and thus secured the victory. Otis. C. F. Fialtes. Pactolus. A Lydian river, whose sands were said to contain gold. Pian, 1, a name of Apollo, 2, a song sung before or after a battle. Polymedes. A Greek hero in the Trojan War. C. Under Odysseus. Said to have added certain letters to the Greek alphabet. Pan. A rustic god, son of Hermes and Penelope. Invented the Pan's pipe, and attended upon Dionysus. Represented with horns and goat's legs. Panathenia. Two festivals of this name were celebrated at Athens with games, sacrifices, and, the lesser annually, the greater every fourth year. Pancratium. A contest in the public games, in which both boxing and wrestling were employed. Pangaeus. A range of mountains in Macedonia, famous for gold and silver mines. Panthea, 1. Wife of Abradatas, king of Susa. Her spirit and loyalty are commended by Xenophon. Panthea, 2. Presumably the mistress of the emperor Lucius Verus. Paris. Son of Priam king of Troy. Parmenio. An able lieutenant of Alexander. Parthenius. A Greek elegiac poet, about 30 BC. Parthians. The successors in Asia of the Persian monarchy. The war between their king Vologesus III and Rome, 162-165 AD, was conducted on the Roman side by the emperor Lucius Verus. He brought it to a successful conclusion, more by the merits of his lieutenants, Cassius and Statius Priscus, than his own. Parthenus. Conquest of the Parthians, quoted as an affected poetical sounding title. Patroclus. Friend and follower of Achilles, who, when he sulked himself, lent him his armor, in which Patroclus won great renown, but Apollo struck him senseless, Euphorbus ran him through, and Hector gave him the last fatal blow. Pegasus. See Bellerophon. Pelasgicum. 
a space under the Acropolis at Athens, unoccupied till the Spartan invasions in the Peloponnesian War brought the country Attics into the town. Peleus. Father of Achilles. Peleus. King of Iolcus, usurper of his nephew Jason's rights. When Medea restored Jason's father Ezen to youth by cutting him to pieces and boiling him, she persuaded the daughters of Peleus to try the same system with their father, which resulted in his death. Pelopids. The descendants of Pelops, many of them, as Atreus and Thyestes, Agamemnon and Menelaus, Orestes, Electra and Iphigenia, famous in tragic story. Penelope. Wife of Odysseus. Pentheus. King of Thebes, resisted the introduction of Dionysus's rites. The god caused his Bacantes, among them Pentheus' mother Agave, to tear him to pieces in their frenzy. Predicas. One of Alexander's generals, who, on the strength of the dying king's having handed him his ring, claimed the succession, but was defeated by the combination of Ptolemy, Antipater, and other generals, and finally assassinated. Peregrine. Nothing can be added to Lucian's description of him in the death of Peregrine, but that he is a historical character. Periander. Son of Cypselus, and tyrant of Corinth. A patron of literature, and one of the seven sages. Pericles. Greatest of Athenian statesmen. A pupil of Anaxagoras. He was nicknamed Olympian. Lucian mentions his funeral speech, delivered in 431 BC, and his intercourse with the famous Milesian courtesan Aspasia, by whom he had a son Pericles. Peripatetics. Aristotle of Stagira, 385-323 BC, the founder of this school of philosophers, studied for twenty years under Plato. In 335 BC he began teaching independently in the Lyceum, a public garden at Athens. The name peripatetic refers to his habit of walking about while lecturing. Forty-six of his works remain, though perhaps only in the form of notes. They are remarkable for the rigidly systematic treatment applied to all subjects alike, to ethics and poetry, not less than to zoology and mechanics. Most notable of his doctrines is that which refers all definable things to four causes, viz. Matter, the existence of which is potentiality, and the moving, final, and formal causes, whose operation is included under the general term energy, the combination of potentiality and energy resulting in the perfection of the completed thing. The summum bonum, according to Aristotle, is eudaimonia, happiness, and each virtue is the mean between the excess and defect of some quality. The virtuous mean between avarice and profuseness, or between luxury and asceticism, might perhaps involve that respect for money with which Lucian reproaches the peripatetics. The ten categories, or predicaments, were an attempt to classify all existing things, among them were substance, quality, quantity, relation, time, and place. Persephone daughter of Zeus and Demeter. Pluto, with the permission of Zeus, carried her down to Hades. Demeter, discovering the truth after a long search, left heaven in anger, and took up her abode on earth. Zeus now ordered Pluto to restore Persephone, as, however, she had partaken of food in the lower world, she was compelled to return thither for one-third of each year. Perseus. His story is given under Danae, Gorgons, and Andromeda. Phaeacians. A fabulous people described in the Odyssey as inhabiting Scyria. Alcinous was their king. Phaedra. Daughter of Minos of Crete, and wife of Theseus. See Hippolytus. Phaedrus. A character in two of the dialogues of Plato, whose friend he was. Phaeton. Son of Helios and Clymene. Being allowed on one occasion to drive the chariot of the sun, he lost control of the horses, and almost consumed the earth with fire. Zeus slew him with a thunderbolt, and cast him into the river Eridanus. His sisters, changed into poplars on its banks, wept tears of amber for his loss. Phalaris. Tyrant of Agrigentum in Sicily, 570-564 BC. For the brazen bull in which he is said to have burnt many victims alive, see Phalaris I. Phaeon. An ugly old boatman at Mytilene, 
with whom Sappho is said to have fallen in love, after he had been made young and beautiful by Aphrodite as a reward for carrying her across the sea without payment. Ferris A small island off the coast of Egypt, on which was a famous lighthouse, built by Ptolemy II. Phidias Famous Athenian sculptor, 490-432 BC The Chryselephantin statue of Zeus at Olympia was his work. Philip of Macedon King, 359-336 BC Raised Macedon from an insignificant state to the mistress of Greece, and made possible the conquests of his son Alexander by his organization. Used diplomacy as much as arms to effect his ends, and systematically bribed persons in the states opposed to him, especially in Athens. Philippides More usually called Philippides. Philo The person to whom Lucian addresses the way to write history is unknown. Philocrates Prominent Athenian, probably in the pay of Philip, into whose hands he constantly played. Philoctetes Armor-bearer of Heracles, inherited his bow. Left at Lemnos on the way to Troy, because a wound from a snake bite rendered him offensive by its stench. Later, an oracle declaring the bow necessary for the capture of Troy, Odysseus went and induced him to come. Philosophy Lucian is fond of ridiculing the different schools of philosophy, some for their paradoxical choice of ends, some for their hypocrisy in practically disregarding their own precepts. The regulation philosophic garb and appearance also comes in for satire, it consisted of threadbare cloak, wallet, and staff, with long beard. A brief account of the chief schools will be found under Academy, Cynics, Cyrenaics, Peripatetics, Stoics, Epicureans, Skeptics, Plato, Pythagoras. Philoxenus. A poet, who, for his severe criticism of a poem of Dionysius I, was imprisoned in the Syracusan quarries. The tyrant, having pardoned him and invited him to dinner, recited another poem he had composed. Asked his opinion of it, Philoxenus made no direct reply, but said, Take me back to the quarries. Phineas. King of Bithynia, blinded by Zeus for unjustly blinding his own children, and sea harpies. Phlegathon. Burning, one of the infernal rivers. Phocian. Athenian statesman and general, died 318 BC, distinguished for virtue, moderation, and poverty. Phoebus. See Apollo. Phoenix, 1. Son of a minter king of Argos. Blinded by his father, fled to Peleus, was cured by Chiron of his blindness, and became tutor to Achilles. Phoenix, 2. An Indian bird which lived 500 years and then cremated itself, another rising from its ashes. Pholus. See Heracles. Phrixus. See Athamas. Phrygians. Troy being in Phrygia, Phrygians, is often used for Trojans. Phryne. Famous Athenian courtesan, 328 BC. Phrynon. Athenian politician in the Macedonian interest, associated by Demosthenes especially with Philocrates. Piraeus. The port of Athens, about five miles off. Pisa. The town in Elis, near which the Olympic Games were held. Pitch plasters were employed by women and by effeminate men for removing the hair from the body. Pitiocamps. Pine Bender, descriptive surname of the robber Cenis, who killed travelers by fastening them to the top of a pine bent down and then allowed to spring up. He was killed by Theseus in the same way. Plataea. A town in Boeotia, near which the final battle of the Greco-Persian War was fought, 478 BC. The Persians were defeated. Plato. An Athenian philosopher, 428-347 BC. And pupil of Socrates, whom in his dialogues he often makes the mouthpiece of his own doctrines. He studied in Africa, Egypt, Italy, and Sicily, and returned to Athens in 386 BC to lecture in the gymnasium of the academy. He paid three visits to the Syracusan court of Dionysius I and II. The Platonic theory of ideas is an attempt to secure accuracy of definition, 
which is the first step towards knowledge, by contemplation of those abstract types or ideas of things. Of which external objects are in every case only an imperfect manifestation, and which are perceptible to us by reason of our familiarity with them in a previous existence. For the soul is immortal, and what we call the acquisition of knowledge is in fact only recollection. In his Republic we have a sketch of a model state, in which philosophers are to be kings, and community of women is recommended as a means of securing scientific breeding. Pluto. Rich in dead, according to Lucian's derivation, also called Hades. Drew lots with his brothers Zeus and Posidon, and received the lower world for his share. His wife was Persephone. Plutus. Son of Iasian and Demeter, and god of wealth. Blinded by Zeus. Nix. The place where the Athenian assembly was held. It was cut out of the side of a small hill west of the Acropolis. Podalirius. Son of Asclepius, and brother of Machaon, with whom he led the Thessalians of Tricca against Troy. Both brothers inherited their father's medical skill. Poesol. The painted porch in the Athenian marketplace, adorned with paintings of Polygnotus. Here Zeno, the founder of the Stoic philosophy, opened his school, which was accordingly often spoken of as, the porch. Poini. Punishments. Infernal spirits, akin to the Irenees. Polmon. Athenian philosopher, head of the academy, 315 BC. Had been dissolute in youth, but was converted, as related in the double indictment, by Xenocrates. Polias. See Athene. Pollux, 1. See Castor. Pollux, 2. See Herods. Polus, 1. A rhetorician of Agrigentum, pupil of Gorgias, with whom he is introduced by Plato in the Gorgias. Polus, 2. A celebrated tragic actor. Polycleitus. 452-412 BC. A Sicyonian sculptor, reckoned the equal of Phidias. His canon was a bronze statue in which he exemplified the principles that he had laid down in a book to which he gave the same name. The Diadominus, or Youth Tying on a Fillet, was one of his most famous works. Polycrates. Powerful tyrant of Samos. Frightened by his excessive prosperity, tried to propitiate Nemesis by throwing into the sea a ring that he prized highly. But a fisherman found it in a fish, and returned it, a sign that his offering was rejected. He was lured to Asia by Oroetes, satrap of Sardis, and by him crucified, 522 BC. Polydemus. Olympic victor, 408 BC. Marvelous stories are told of his strength. Polygnotus. Famous painter, of Thassos, 422 BC. Polynices. One of the sons of Oedipus, who killed each other. Polyphemus. See Cyclopes. His story is given dialogues of the sea gods, I. Polyxena. Daughter of Priam and Hecuba, loved by Achilles, who after his death demanded that she should be sacrificed to his manes. She submitted willingly, and was slain by Neoptolemus at his father's tomb. Porch, the. See Poesol and Stoics. Porus. See Alexander, 1. Posidon. Son of Cronus, brother of Zeus and Pluto, received the sea as his province. Assisted Apollo in building the walls of Troy for Laomedon. Praxiteles. Athenian sculptor, 364 BC. With Scopas, headed the later Attic school, known less for sublimity than beauty. The Nidian Aphrodite was his. Priapus. Son of Dionysus and Aphrodite, worshipped especially at Lampsicus. Prodicus. Sophist of CEOs, often at Athens, where Socrates is said to have attended his lectures, about 430 BC spoken of by Plato with more respect than most sophists, and famous for his apologue of the choice of Heracles, between pleasure and virtue. Pretus. See Bellerophon. Prometheus. Son of Iapetus, and therefore first cousin of Zeus, 
who nailed him up on the Caucasus, and instructed an eagle to devour his liver, which grew again each night. The provocation had been threefold, one, Prometheus, forming clay figures, had persuaded Athene to breathe life into them, and thus created man, two, he had stolen fire from heaven for the use of man. Three, by dividing a slain animal into two portions, one consisting of bones wrapped up in fat, the other of the lean parts, and persuading Zeus to choose the former as his share. He had secured the more desirable portion of sacrificial animals for man. The confusion of the sexes alluded to in the literary Prometheus, 7, is perhaps drawn from Plato's account in the Symposium of the Creation of Double Beings, who possessed the characteristics of both sexes. And referred by Lucian to Prometheus on his own responsibility. Though in Phaedrus, Fables, 4. 14, Prometheus is charged with a confusion of the sexes in a different sense. Protesilaus. A Thessalian, son of Iphiclus, and the first Greek slain by the Trojans. Permitted to return to life for a few hours to see his wife Laodomia. Proteus. The prophetic old man of the sea, from whom it was only possible to obtain information by seizing him, this was difficult, as he changed into many different shapes. Peregrine, whom C. took the name of Proteus. Ptolemy, 1. Son of Lagus, surnamed Soter. A general of Alexander, and afterwards king of Egypt. Died 283 BC. Ptolemy, 2. Philadelphus, son of Ptolemy Soter. Married his sister Arsino, 309-247 BC. Ptolemy, 3. Dionysus. King of Egypt, 80-51 BC. Puzzles. Lucian is never tired of ridiculing the verbal quibbles in which the philosophers of his time indulged. He attributes them especially to the Stoics, whose insistence on pure reason, as opposed to emotion, for the guide of life, resulted in much attention to logic, including its paradoxical forms. Among these logical puzzles are the following, 1, Sorites, the heap trick. Suppose a heap of corn. Is it a heap? Yes. Take a grain away. Is it a heap? Yes. And so on, till only one grain is left. The drawing of the line is impossible. 2. The horns. If you have not lost a thing, you still have it? Certainly. Have you lost your horns? No. Then you are horned. 3. The crocodile. A child is caught by a crocodile, the father asks him to give it back. I will, says the crocodile, on condition that you tell me correctly whether I shall do so or not. The dilemma is obvious. 4. The day and night. This appears to be a proof that there is no such thing as night, through the ambiguity in, day being, night cannot be, which in Greek, though not in English, is equally natural in the sense of since it is day, it cannot be night, and if day exists, night cannot. 5. The reaper. I will prove to you that you will not reap your corn, thus. If you reap it, you will not either reap or not reap, but reap. If you do not reap it, you will not either reap or not reap, but not reap. So in each case you will not either reap or not reap, that is, there will be no reaping. 6. The rightful owner. Unexplained, but see Epictetus, 2, 19. 7, and, 8, the Electra, and the man in the hood, sufficiently explained in Sale of Creeds, 22. Pineption. An Attic Month. Pylades. Cousin and friend of Orestes. Pyrrhus. Stock name for a slave. Used jestingly in Sale of Creeds instead of Pyro. Pyro. Of Ellis. About 300 BC gave up painting to become a philosopher, and was the founder of the skeptics. Pyrrhus. King of Epirus, 295-272 BC. The greatest general of his time, won several victories over the Romans. Pythagoras. Born at Samos, settled at Croton in Italy. 580-510 BC. The early Ionic philosophers, as Thales and Heraclitus, 
had found the origin of all things in some one principle, as water, or fire. Pythagoras found it in number and proportion, hence the name order, Kappa Sigma Mu Omicron, which he first gave to the universe. Hence also the mystic importance attached to certain numbers, e.g. The Decad, called Tetractes, which we have translated, Quaternion, as made by the addition of the first four integers, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 is equal to 10, and the pentagram. Or figure resulting from the production of all the sides of a regular pentagon till they intersect. Pythagoras had traveled in Egypt, and perhaps brought thence his most famous doctrines of the immortality of the soul and transmigration. He is said to have retained the memory of his own previous existences, especially as Euphorbus the Trojan, whose shield he recognized, human knowledge, for him as for Plato, would be accounted for as recollection from earlier lives. He instituted a brotherhood of his disciples, with elaborate training in different degrees, and the Pythagorean Ipsi Dixit, implying that what the master had said was not open to argument, marks the strict subordination. A novice had to observe silence for five years. Pythagoras left no writings, and this, combined with the mystic character of his speculations on number and his specially authoritative position, gave occasion to innumerable legends, misrepresentations, and extensions. The Pythagorean prohibition of beans as food has never been explained, see Mayer's note on Jov, 15. 174, the usual account is that he thought the souls of his parents might be in them. The story of his appearing at the Olympic Games with a golden thigh is one of the later legends illustrative of his supposed assumption of superhuman qualities, which made him the model of impostors or half-impostors like Apollonius of Tyana, Alexander of Abinuticus, or Paracelsus, Pythias, an Athenian orator, of disreputable character, an enemy of Demosthenes, Python, an eloquent Byzantine orator in the pay of Philip of Macedon, Radamanthus, son of Zeus and Europa, and brother of Minos. After his death, a judge in Hades. Rhea, or Sibylle. Daughter of Uranus and Gu, wife of Cronus, and mother of Zeus, Hera, Posidon, Pluto, Hestia, and Demeter. Her worship, celebrated by the Carabants and the Gali, was of a wild and enthusiastic character. She is commonly represented as being drawn by lions. See also under Attis. Sabasius. A Phrygian deity, of doubtful origin, commonly described as a son of Rhea. Salamis. An island off the west coast of Attica, the scene of a great naval victory of the Athenians over the Persians in 480 BC. It is to this victory that the oracle refers, quoted in the Zeus Tragedus. Salii. The dancing priests of Mars, said to have been instituted by Numa. Solmonius. Son of Aeolus, and brother of Sisyphus. Zeus slew him with the thunderbolt, for claiming sacrifice, and imitating the thunder and lightning. Sappho. A lesbian poetess of the 6th century BC taken as a type of elegance in the portrait study. Sardanapalus. Last king of the Assyrian Empire of Nineveh. Lucian's favorite type of luxury and effeminacy. Sarpedon. Son of Zeus and Laodamia, slain in the Trojan War by Patroclus. Saturnalia. The feast of the Latin god Saturn, held in the month of December. During the feast, all ranks devoted themselves to merriment, presents were exchanged, and public gambling was officially recognized. A mock king was also chosen, who could impose forfeits on his subjects. Lucian does not speak of the Saturnalia by that name, but only of the feast of Cronus, with whom Saturn was identified, and in some cases it is possible that he refers to a feast of Cronus himself. Satyrs. Beings connected with the worship of Dionysus, and represented with snub noses, horns, and tails. Skeptics. A school of philosophers founded by Pyro of Elis, who flourished 325 BC. Abstention from definition, and suspension of judgment, were the guiding principles of the school. Scyria. Sea Phaeacians. Siron. A robber who infested the frontier of Attica and Megara, 
and compelled travelers to wash his feet upon the edge of the Cyronian precipice, kicking them over into the sea during the operation. He was slain by Theseus. Scopas A famous sculptor of Peros, flourished 400-350 BC. Selim Goddess of the Moon Fell in love with Endymion. Seleucus Surnamed Nicator First king of Syria, 312-280 BC For his wife Stratonist C. Antiochus Semilla Daughter of Cadmus and Harmonia Beloved by Zeus Incited by the machinations of Hera, she prevailed upon Zeus against his will to appear to her in all his splendor. His lightnings consumed her. But the child Dionysus, with whom she was pregnant, was saved by Zeus, and matured within his thigh. Simiramis and her husband Ninus were the founders of the Assyrian Empire of Nineveh. Her date is placed at about 2000 BC. She built numerous cities. Silenus. A satyr, son of Hermes or of Pan. Usually represented as drunk and riding on an ass, in attendance on Dionysus. Simonides. Of CEOs, a famous lyric poet, 556 to 467 BC. Said to have added four letters to the alphabet. Sisyphus. King of Corinth, fraudulent and avaricious. Punished in the lower world by having to roll a stone uphill, which as soon as he reached the top always fell to the bottom again. Socrates. Son of Sophroniscus and Phenarete, 469-399 BC. He abandoned sculpture, his father's profession, for the study of philosophy, in which he was remarkable for the preference that he gave to ethics over physics, and for the method of dialectic or logical conversation carried on by means of question and answer, for the purpose of eliciting accurate definition. He was frequently ridiculed on the comic stage by Aristophanes and other poets. In 399 BC a charge of impiety was brought against him by Anatus and Miletus, and he was condemned to drink hemlock. Socrates served with credit at the Battle of Delium, for 24 BC. An oracle given to his disciple Caraphon pronounced Socrates to be the wisest of men, Socrates himself claimed to know one thing only, that he knew nothing. Lucian alludes to his favorite oaths, the dog and plane tree. For the Platonic theory of ideas and the community of women, see Plato. Soli. A city on the coast of Cilicia, proverbial for the bad Greek spoken there. Solon. A famous Athenian legislator, 594 BC said to have visited Croesus of Lydia. Sophist. At Athens this word denoted in particular a paid teacher of grammar, rhetoric, politics, mathematics, and Lucian sometimes uses it also for philosopher, and perhaps sometimes in the modern sense of a quibbler. Sophroniscus. Father of Socrates. Spartans. Among the means adopted to train the youths in fortitude were competitive scourgings at the altar of Artemis Orthia, which must be endured without sign of distress. Stesichorus. Lyric poet of Himera, 612 BC. Lost his sight after lampooning Helen, and only recovered it by composing a retractation, Palinode. Stenibia. Another name for Antia. See Bellerophon. Stoics. School of philosophy, so called from the Stoa Poesal, or Painted Porch, at Athens, in which Zeno their founder taught. Zeno, Cleanthes, Chrysippus, were the first three heads, starting 310 BC. Stoicism was a great influence among the Romans, as with the Emperor M. Aurelius. Its aim was purely practical, to make man independent of his surroundings. The wise man, who formed his views on pure reason, would recognize that virtue or duty was the only end, and that pleasure and pain, wealth, power, and everything else that did not depend on his own choice, were things indifferent. He would ultimately attain to apathy, and be completely unmoved by the ordinary objects of desire or aversion, being, in whatever external condition, the only king, the only happy. They paid great attention to logic, 
much reasoning being necessary to establish these paradoxes, whence their reputation for verbal quibbles, and their elaborate technical terms for the relations between sensation and the mental processes. Later Stoics relaxed the severity of the indifference doctrine by dividing indifferentia into preposita and rejecta, e.g. health was to be preferred to sickness, though virtue was consistent with either. This would open the door to the preference of wealth, and account for Lucian's sneer at Stoic usurers. The Stoic physics was a materialistic pantheism. Stratonus. C. Antiochus. Styx. Loathing, one of the infernal rivers. The oath by it was the only one that could bind the immortals. Tinarum. Southern point of Greece, supposed way from earth to Hades. Talent. Sum of money, about 250 pounds. Talos, one. Nephew of Daedalus, famous artificer, worshipped as a hero at Athens. Talos, too. A brazen man made by Hephaestus, given to Minos, and employed as a sentinel to walk round Crete thrice daily. Tanagra. Town in Boeotia, famous for a breed of fighting cocks. Telus. See Sharon, 10. Tyros. Son of Ares and king of Thrace, committed bigamy with Procne and Philomela, daughters of Pandion. The two wives were changed at their own request to Nightingale and Swallow, and Tyrus became a hoopoe. Tusser. Step-brother of Ajax Telamonius, and best archer among the Greeks at Troy. Thais. A famous Athenian courtesan, accompanied Alexander. Thamiris. Thracian bard, blinded by the muses for presuming to challenge them. Theano, 1. Wife of Antenor and priestess of Athene at Troy. Theano, 2. Female philosopher of Pythagoras's school, perhaps his wife. Thebe. A daughter of Prometheus, from whom Thebes had its name. Themistocles. Savior of Greece in the Persian War, 480-478 BC. He convinced the Athenians that the famous oracle meant by wooden walls and divine salamis to promise a naval victory there if they trusted to their fleet. Theophrastus. Head of the peripatetic school after Aristotle. Theopompus. Of Chios, historian, of the 4th century BC. Thericles. A Corinthian potter, of uncertain date. Thersites. A Greek at Troy, deformed, impudent, and a demagogue. Theseus. Son of Aegeus, king of Athens. Destroyed Cyron, Pitiocamps, Circean, and other evildoers. Slew the Minotaur, C-2, in the Cretan labyrinth, and escaped thence by means of the clue given to him by Minos's daughter Ariadne, of whom he was enamored, but whom he afterwards deserted in Naxos where she was found and married by Dionysus. Made an expedition against the Amazons, and carried off their queen Antiope, whose sister Hippolyta afterwards invaded Attica, but was repelled by Theseus. By Antiope he had a son Hippolytus, with whom his second wife Phaedra fell in love. Assisted by his friend Pyrithous, Theseus carried off Helen from Sparta, and kept her at Aphidne. Thesmophoria Festival of Demeter at Athens. Thetis. Mother of Achilles. Thyestis. Son of Pelops and brother of Atreus. The latter, having been wronged by him, killed and served up to him his own sons. Thersus. A wand of the Narthex plant, carried by the Bacantes, with its head wreathed in vine or ivy, which concealed a steel point. Tibius. Stock name for a slave. Timon. The misanthrope, lived during the Peloponnesian War. Tiresias. A Theban seer, was changed into a girl as the result of striking two serpents. Seven years later, he recovered his sex in the same way. Asked by Zeus and Hera to decide their dispute which sex was constituted with stronger passions, said, the woman. Hera, offended, blinded him, Zeus consoled him with the gift of prophecy. See Odysseus also. Titans. 
the dynasty previous to that of the Olympian gods, till Zeus deposed Cronus, and imprisoned him and the other children of Uranus and Gut in Tartarus. Tithonus. The husband of Eos, Aurora, who gave him immortality, but not immortal youth, whence the use of his name for a withered old man. Titormus. An Aetolian shepherd of gigantic strength. Titius. A giant punished by vultures in Hades for violence offered to Artemis. Tribe. C. Demi. Triptolemus. Favorite of Demeter, who gave him a winged chariot and seeds of wheat, which he scattered as he drove over the earth. Triton. A sea god, son of Posidon and Amphitrite. Tritonia. A name for Athene, of doubtful explanation. Trophonius. A mortal worshipped as a hero after death. His oracle was consulted in a cave in Boeotia. Tyro. For her story see Dialogues of the Sea Gods, 13. Lucian plays on the name elsewhere, Tyrus, Cheese. Uranus. See Cronus and Gul. Vologesis 3. See Parthians. Xenocrates. Distinguished philosopher of the Academy, friend of Plato and Aristotle. Xerxes. King of Persia, 485 to 465 BC invader of Greece, 480 BC. His bridge over the Hellespont and canal past Mount Athos were proverbially foolish exercises of power. Samoxis. A Thracian who, having been a slave of Pythagoras in Samos, learned his doctrines, and communicated them to the Thracians after his escape. He was deified in Thrace after death. Zeno. See Stoics. Zenodotus. See Homer. Zeus. Son of Cronus, and of Rhea, who saved him at birth in the manner described under Cronus. With the help of the Cyclopes, who gave him the thunderbolt, and of the giants, he overthrew Cronus and the other titans, imprisoned them in Tartarus, and established himself as king of the gods. The giants afterwards revolted, but were crushed with the assistance of Hera. Zeus now became the father of Persephone by Demeter, of the Muses by Mnemosyne, of Apollo and Artemis by Leto, of Hebe, Ares, and Alithia by Hera, and of Athene, who was born from his head. He was the lover also of the mortals, Danae, Semele, Europa, Io, and many others, in various disguises. On one occasion Posidon, Hera, and Athene conspired against him, but were frustrated by Thetis and Briarius. Zeus in gratitude, at the request of Thetis, punished the Greeks, for their ill-treatment of Achilles by persuading Agamemnon, with a lying dream to make a premature attack upon Troy. His superiority to the other gods is expressed in the boast alluded to in Dialogues of the Gods, 21. Lucian also refers to the Cretan story, according to which Zeus lay buried in that island. His usual attributes are the scepter, the eagle, and the thunderbolt. The famous statue of Zeus at Olympia was by Phidias. In Egypt he was identified with Ammon. Zeuxis. Celebrated painter of Heraclea, 424-400 BC. Zoilus. See Homer. Zopirus. A Persian who mutilated himself horribly to gain entrance to Babylon and betray it to Darius. End of Volume 4 and End of Book.